Unreliable electric power systems not only cost millions of dollars in downtime and repairs, they have the potential to maim and to kill. Reliability leadership must focus on the preservation of both physical and human assets because everyone has the right to a safe work environment and to return home unharmed. Hello and welcome. Today, I want to talk about the role ultrasound plays in the reliability of electric power systems. My name is Alan Reenstra and I work for SDT Ultrasound Solutions, the world's favorite ultrasound company. Why favorite? I guess I could say the world's best or the world's biggest, but that's boring. I prefer favorite. Being a favorite is popular opinion and you gotta back that up. Being favorite challenges us to be our very best every day. We provide ultrasound and vibration solutions that help industry gain a better understanding about the health of their assets. Our technology leads to fewer workplace accidents, reduces unplanned downtime, eliminates waste energy, and contributes to product quality. We're deeply committed to driving culture change that positively affects the reliability of your physical assets and the safety of your human assets. Today I'm going to talk about how ultrasound helps with electric power reliability. We're going to cover what is ultrasound, what is partial discharge, what are the consequences when partial discharge is not detected and remediated, and what are the risks of doing nothing, and finally how ultrasound helps. Let's examine ultrasound in the context of asset reliability and condition management. Ultrasound is one of three classifications of sound. There's infrasound, low frequency sounds we can't hear, audible sounds, sounds that most of us can hear, and ultrasound, high frequency sounds that we also can't hear. By scientific definition, ultrasound refers to any sound pressure wave with a repetition frequency greater than 20,000 hertz. Well, we can just say 20 kilohertz, it's the same thing. The characteristics of ultrasound, especially around 40 kilohertz, are particularly interesting for inspectors listening for symptoms of asset failure. First, sound waves have a repetition frequency. The lower the frequency, the longer the wavelength and the greater their energy. The higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength and the lesser their energy. Second, sound waves need a medium through which to travel from source to sensor. Now that sensor might be our ear, or it could be a resonance sensor connected to an ultrasound detector. The medium can be a gas, a liquid, a solid, or a combination of all three. Thirdly, sound needs energy to move through the medium. Low frequency sounds travel far and spread wide through the medium, whereas high frequency sounds are constrained and absorbed by their medium. They tend to remain close to their source. It's these unique characteristics that make ultrasound a useful technology for finding defect symptoms of all forms in literally any asset type. Ultrasound instruments detect ultrasound related to defects while screening out other plant noise that is otherwise just a distraction. Ultrasound owns the apex of the P to F curve. The DIPF curve illustrated here shows the life cycle of an asset from the time it's designed, installed, initiated, and enters functional failure. The DIPF curve demonstrates which technologies are most suited to detecting different failure modes. In the graphic shown here, ultrasound appears first because of its unique ability to sense changes in healthy operating parameters sooner than others. Before the asset gets hot, noisy, and shaky, ultrasound has already detected, trended, and analyzed the microscopic behavioral transitions from a healthy to a sick asset. This is useful on so many levels. Early alerts benefit planning and scheduling, MRO spares management, production, operations, and, and maintenance, of course. Organizations with this level of advanced planning can even rewrite their strategic asset management policy. Ultrasound detectors work on a principle known as heterodyning. If you're hearing that word for the first time, it's just a fancy term for transitioning high-frequency ultrasound into lower-frequency sound so you can hear it. What is important to note is that during the heterodyne process, SDT detectors maintain the characteristics of the source signal, the loudness of the source signal, the quality of the source signal. The heterodyne principle gives ultrasound inspectors superhuman hearing.
Now that we understand ultrasound a little better, how can we use it to our advantage? Overzealous marketing often misleads us into thinking that ultrasound can do everything. While it is the most versatile condition monitoring technology, it still has its limitations. Our job is to figure out where it fits into asset condition management. This is wordplay in its plainest form. If a defect symptom produces friction, impacting, or turbulence, then it's a fit for ultrasound. It's really that simple, and from fit, we identified eight application categories for ultrasound. We call them the eight pillars of ultrasonic reliability, and they are mechanical, detect defects in any mechanical system, leaks, find pressure and vacuum leaks in noisy conditions, lubrication, avoid over and under lubrication, grease bearings right, electrical, inspect medium and high voltage systems for arcing, tracking, and corona, Valves, assess valve tightness and function. Steam systems, find faulty steam traps and components. Hydraulics, troubleshoot any hydraulic system for passing and blockages. And finally, tightness, determine the tightness of any volume. But what is partial discharge? Well, partial discharge is a localized electrical discharge or a spark in an insulation system that doesn't completely bridge the gap between two conducting electrodes. It can occur in any point in the insulation system where the electric field strength exceeds the breakdown strength of that portion of the insulating material. This could be due to voids within a solid insulation material, across the surface of insulating material, in gas bubbles within liquid insulation, or around electronic gas in the form of corona. Partial discharge is an atomic reaction which, due to the movement of electrons, ionizes the air molecules at locations of high stress. Ionization splits the oxygen molecule to form ozone and nitrous oxide, which in their normal states are generally harmless, but when you mix them with water vapor, they become corrosive. Now, if you've ever walked into a substation and noticed the smell of ozone, then you've witnessed the presence of partial discharge firsthand. Partial discharge has many causes, including voids in solid insulation, often caused during manufacturing, mechanical breakdown or damage to insulation, sometimes caused during installation, or we call it poor workmanship, design defects, such as poor stress control or irregularities, or a combination of factors that are characteristic of assets getting older and ultimately breaking down. Partial discharge emits energy in several ways, producing electromagnetic emission in the form of radio waves, light and heat, acoustic emission in the audible and ultrasonic ranges, and ozone and nitrous oxide gases. These emissions enable us to detect, to locate, measure, and analyze partial discharge activities so we can identify faults before they develop into failures. Partial discharge activity may be intermittent, or it may vary in, in intensity over time, but once it starts, one thing's for sure. The damage is always going to increase. It's not going to get better. So where do we find partial discharge? Well, you'll find partial discharge activity in all types of high voltage power assets, from switchgear to transformers to overhead lines and underground cables. Partial discharge causes degradation and failures. Experience shows that partial discharge activity is a contributory factor in over 80% of disruptive substation failures. It's the most reliable indicator of the true condition of insulation in live assets. So why do we want to test for it? Well, any discussion about risk must include health and safety, but it should not ignore asset reliability. One certainty is that safety and reliability risks are both linked to unscheduled downtime, costly legal exercises, and ultimately lost profit. A winning solution identifies safety and reliability as one and the same and marginalizes their impact to the other three. The consequences of allowing partial discharge to progress include damage to assets, pole fires, explosions, and deadly arc flash. As I said at the opening, unreliable electrical assets not only cost millions in downtime and repairs, they possess the potential to maim and kill our colleagues. Ultrasound presents a triple win solution. It reduces the risk of arc flash exposure, ensures equipment reliability, 
and allows inspectors to work at a safe distance from high voltage assets. Notice in all these photos that the inspector is on the safe side of the fence. Ultrasound detects defects which, when left to deteriorate, could lead to an arc flash event. This doesn't suggest that ultrasound removes the need for personal protective equipment and other safety measures. I'm yet to meet an arc flash suit which can detect an arc flash at its inception. But if an arc flash suit is the last line of defense, then ultrasound should be your first. How great is it to inspect motor circuit control panels without opening them up and exposing technicians to risk? An air gap is all that's required for ultrasound inspectors to pick up partial discharge activity inside the panels. Air gaps can be around the panel doors or through the cooling vents. In the event that a panel is hermetically sealed, simply place a magnetic mount ultrasound sensor on the outside of the panel and listen directly through the steel cabinet. Unreliable electrical assets represent risk for both physical and human assets. Reliability leaders must be focused on the preservation of both. Ultrasound represents a safe, easy, reliable technology for assessing the presence of risk and the need for maintenance intervention in electrical assets. It's a low-cost technology with a fast competency curve. To hear more about how ultrasound can help you, click on the link below. If you found this article interesting, please click like and even share it with your colleagues. To receive notifications about new content from SDT, be sure to hit the subscription button to receive our alerts. Thanks for watching and hear more!